Okay, welcome everybody. This is CSIS 3020 Web Programming and Design. This is the fourth week and hopefully the only video lecture. I have already shared with you guys video lectures from previous years. You guys have all of them are on YouTube, so they, you can watch them from wherever. So the first two are covering chapters 6, 7, 8, and 9, JavaScript. Okay? So I'm covering all the basics for JavaScript. I need you to know that by today. That's why I'm posting the video lectures early in the week. So you guys can watch it and be prepared for this class Friday. I'm also posting two additional video lectures from previous year. One is a very short one, explaining what's the purpose of JavaScript in your website, okay? How we're going to be using it. And then the fourth one, actually going through a lot of JavaScript widgets that are out there that you can actually download and apply to your project, okay? JavaScript widgets that include, like, for instance, the date picker. Instead of having to put, you know, a whole date, year, four digits, then month, two digits, then day, two digits, etc. You just click on a calendar and you select the year and month and whatever. Date picker. Accordion menus. Menus that take only the, the, the smallest amount of real estate. And then when you click on them, they expand like an accordion so that you can see all the sub-menus. It's an excellent tool. How is it done? With JavaScript. I show you in that video. Calendars, magnifying glass menus, all kinds of menus, all the ones that you can imagine. Validation. Sometimes when you are registering a user, for instance, you're asking for username, password, uh, name, address, all this stuff, phone number. Well, you know what's mandatory and what's not. And the way that you f enforce it is by doing JavaScript validation. So you tell JavaScript to make sure that there's a name, that there is an address, that there is a password. If the user doesn't fill in that, then you will throw an error or a pop-up or whatever. That's done through JavaScript. All kinds of stuff. And that's something that you gotta start looking in the future for, okay? Right now it's week four. Week eight, you guys have to turn in a full website with HTML, cascading style sheets, and JavaScript of ten different pages representing ten different functional requirements, okay? So between now and week eight, you're going to have to start popping two pages per week, including JavaScript. The JavaScript is going to be wherever you input a date, that's a date picker. Whatever you have to register, you have to validate the data that is being registered. All that stuff. The menus, if you have already a menu that is working dynamically with cascading style sheets, that's fine with me. But if you wanted something different, like more dynamic, more eye candy menu, you should do it with JavaScript. It's not mandatory. You can select either one. Okay? But you, you you have to start getting into JavaScript mood. At this point, HTML cascading style sheet is gone. I mean, you should guys should be experts. Right now, by looking at the home pages of most of you, they're awesome. They're really good. And I hope you have spent the time analyzing the structure of your templates. And I'm going to go very quickly, I'm going to go very quickly through some, not all of them, some of the home pages that got turned in last week. Okay? These are the best. Look at this. First of all, it has nice images. They're not distorted. Notice that these images look nice. 
they have the same ratio. If you pick images from out there on the internet, you have to make sure you clip them, okay, in such a way that they have the same ratio so that when you present them all together under the same real state, they're not going to distort. They're not going to look like the guy's head was enlarged just because he has to be put on that real state. Or the palm tree is not going to look like it's being enlarged just because you're trying to put it in that, in this space. Okay? So that was one of the things that I carefully looked at. And I mentioned it two weeks ago. Images should not distort. This is an appealing website. And notice it doesn't have any Latin content. All the content in this page is relevant to what the student is going to create. Okay? He's creating a tourism website. And he's going to have 10 different places in the world where he can, when people can go and, and comment on it and, and all that stuff. Really cool website. Look at this. The login. The login is integrated into the home page. That's fine with me. Some of you said, hey, but Professor, I have the home page and the login in one page, so what am I going to turn in? That's fine. As long as it looks nice, it's part of the page, go ahead. I have no problem. Some of you, I ran into the problem that, okay, really cool web. Where am I going to click to register? There was no menu, there was no link where I could register. You're not going to allow me to register? You have to have somewhere a registration link or button or whatnot or menu, okay, that would allow me to register. That's one of the functional requirements that is coming, okay? This is another good example. Rate my talk. Okay, this guy's going to create a website where you can actually rate doctors, medical doctors, for different practices. And you can actually search and do all kinds of stuff. It's really nice. It's appealing. Notice that there's no Latin content. I could not believe that after I said, please do not give me the same template that you download as your assignment, there were students that sent Latin content. And he was like... That shows me that you didn't even put the effort to customize the template to your needs. Register. Log in. Register and log in. Sometimes when you're not when well, when you're logging, the login will disappear obviously, and that's something that is coming up later on. But <coughs> if you're not logging, then you should be able to log in or register. Maybe you're not registered yet. This is another cool one. This is the one where uh, Worldwide Student Connect. Students are going to register and they will be able to connect no matter where they're from the world they are. Okay? Really cool website. He is very... Uh, uh, oh, what should I say? <laughs> he, he's, he's trying to do Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus links, all that stuff. He might not be able to do all that stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it's there in case we want to eventually... Obviously, this website could be a real thing. It could be a real thing. Just because you guys only developed 10 functional requirements, like logging, registration, show this, show that, whatever, whatever. Only 10. That doesn't mean that it should stop there. You can actually keep developing and make it a commercial one. This is a nice quality website. You guys see this? It's appealing. It has structure. Okay? A nice distribution. This is what I was looking for. Okay? This is another really cool one. An online inventory database. Okay? This is going to be an, uh, an inventory database for... Um, or computer equipment and stuff. So I can, I can log in here and there's no registration. 
This is one of the guys that didn't have a registration. How can I register? What if I don't have a login? I need to be able to register. Okay? This is another really cool one. Look at this. It's a different menu. A different type of menu. It's simple. Yet, it has enough content that will tell me right as soon as I hit the homepage. I say, we're a wish list. And then I read two or three sentences. I immediately know what this website is all about. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. I wanted content, not Latin content, but content relevant to what you're going to be building. And the homepage should be that, that eye candy that attracts the users to your website. Okay? Let me register. Let me log in. This is cool. This is a cool idea. Suppose you have a list of wish lists, a list of wish things that you should get, you want to get, and you want to be able to share that with your friends, family, whatever, whatever. This is what this is about. You register, you log in, you create your wish list, and you share it with people that you know. Simple idea. Homepage, perfect. It tells me exactly what it's about. I'm looking forward to the rest of the pages in this website. This is another really cool one. <coughs> Excuse me. Nobody said anything about the... Uh, Alright, nobody has joined in. This is a really cool website too. Okay. Um it's about simulating that you are trading in the stock. So you will be able to register and once you register you will be able to log in and start doing investments. You know, simulation of investments. That's pretty cool. At least I thought it was nice. Um, um, the homepage is a, it's a little bit crowded. There's too much content. You know, by the fourth, fifth line, and you get bored of reading this stuff. There should be like more, I don't know, different structure. Maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a bullet list of stuff that uh, that I can accomplish in this website. And right now I know it's a simulated trading platform so that's good enough. He could have cut um, some of this content. Make it simpler. Also another thing that you should keep in mind guys is how much real estate are you taking. Okay? This is... Okay. What is the resolution in this laptop? The resolution in this laptop right now is 1680 by 1050 pixels. Okay? The standard today for uh, web pages are just about 1680 by 1200. Okay, that's the standard. In other words, most monitors today, most computer monitors are able to display easily, comfortably, 1680 by 1200 pixels. Okay? So it's about this size. So if you look at this page, it's taking probably the width it's not even a thousand, it's probably nine hundred. And we can figure it out that by looking at the firebug and determining the width. Seven hundred and eighty pixels. Okay? Seven hundred and eighty pixels. That's cool. That's fine. It could be a little bit wider. Up to a thousand is fine. 
But, look at this. It's taking me a whole screen and scrolling to get to all the content. No, try to put as much content as you can in one screen without having to scroll. Okay? That's the idea. To be able to put... As I know sometimes it's not possible. I know sometimes, and it depends on the type of website that you're building, I know sometimes it's not possible to put all the content that you need to put in one page so that it doesn't scroll. But try. Okay? This is another really cool one. Menu track. It's a restaurant. The Summer Restaurant is proud to announce Menu Track. So it's a tool to guide you through healthy eating. So you will be able to log in and and uh, get you um, recipes and stuff from different restaurants. <coughs> Specials, menus, all that stuff. Again, where is my registration? If I'm not... If I cannot log in because I'm not registered, at least put something like here, like register. Something very simple, like register. A link it says register. Just in case you haven't re registered. Okay. But it's nice. It's it's appealing. It's it's very simple. Notice that it doesn't have much content. And it's display. I don't have to scroll in this website to see all. And, and I can see what it's about, you know. A tool to guide you through healthy eating. It's it's straightforward. And I bet if I go to the problem statement for this website, if I go to the problem statement, that's what I should see. I should see I'm trying to build a tool to guide you through the healthy eating. Okay? That's what the home page is about. It's eye candy, attract your users, content straightforward. What is it about? What is you gonna get out of this website? Give me a registration, you're done. This is another really cool one for internships. This is where companies will post internships and students will register trying to get, find, search for internships. Okay? So this is like trying to get a match, students to companies. Very simple. Look at this. Not much content, no Latin content relevant content but it's going to be very simple you click on interns you should be able to go to the interns page you go to businesses you should go to the business depends on who you are straightforward nice layout nice colors distribution perfect this is what I was looking for Surf Adventures, this is a really nice one too. Has nice menu here and another one here. It's missing register. Okay? But as soon as you read it, the first two things you know what it's about. It's about surfing. What if you like surfing and you want to find the best place to surf? Depending on the time of the year, the weather, and all that stuff, this is the place. You go here and you find other people that have found other places, the best. On, based on time of the year, uh, et cetera, et cetera, places to surf. Okay? And, and I'm sure there's going to be some kind of rating for the different uh, places. Okay? Excellent. Nice. To the point. This one. Really nice, too. A rental tracker. Okay? It's a theatrical lighting and equipment rental and distribution company. So if you are into theater, uh, whatnot, and you need equipment to be able to, you know, film on stage or whatever, create, a, I don't know, equipment for staging and all that stuff, this is where you get it. You get the lighting equipment rental for, for, uh, for your uh, play or your film or whatever. Okay? So this is a company that is going to be doing equipment rental and distribution company. So there's going to be an inventory of all this equipment. And you're going to be able to lease it. 
okay? The menus are really cool. Again, this guy is missing registration. I don't see it. If I'm a film director, where is it? Oh, okay, to create an account, click here. Yeah, okay. It's better if you just put it like in a menu. If you have to, um, if you have to navigate the home page for more than 10 seconds trying to find it, it's not in the right place. Or, or just instead of putting to create an account, just put here register. Shows up. Goes right to your eyes. Okay, let me show you another one. This one, yeah, I know. It's it's kind of too simplistic, but it's it's as simple as it gets. Okay. Um, it's missing picture. I would like to see more pictures, honestly. There's only one picture, and it's the logo. Okay. But um, yeah, it's simple. It's direct. What is it about? It's how to. It's a website that features cool tricks and tips on how to solve everyday problems. And there's a whole list and you can be able to search. How do you open a coconut? Or how do you fix a screen, a window screen? Or how do you, I don't, it's how to's, okay? So you will be able to search them or you can be able to navigate through the different categories, okay? I wish he will put more images. He or she, I don't know. All right, this is another cool one about food stock. Okay, you can register now. You can log in. It's the leader in food industry for inventory tracking systems. So this is going to be an inventory of food. All you have to do is enter your grocery list with quantities and expiration dates, and food stock will do the rest. So if you know that a recipe takes certain ingredients and you need to create, I don't know how many dishes of that recipe, it will tell you. Food stock should tell you how much groceries you need and if you have it in the inventory. And if you don't have it in the inventory, then you know what you have to order. It's a very smart tool for restaurants or, I don't know, or even at home if you do parties. Okay? Straight to the point. Nice. Appealing. This one. Espresso to go. To find local shops easily. You like coffee? You find yourself in San Francisco, in Chicago, some in LA, I don't know. Any, somewhere where you are not familiar with, you just go to the website and it will tell you. And it will give you um, reviews and stuff. Menus from the different places. Okay. The layout. Notice the layout, the colors, everything. It lends itself to the theme. Excellent. This is really good theme. Okay. So that's what I was talking about. That's what I wanted to see. Those were the best that I got. So keep keep up the good work, guys. Now, um, I'm going to be sharing this URL with you guys. Anybody who wants to join me every Friday at 6 o'clock, all you have to do is go to this URL and, you know, join me live in the classroom. I'm going to stop sending different URLs every Friday. So this is it. This is going to be the URL from now on. You just join me, 6 o'clock, and you will be able to ask questions live. And instead, you know, if, if you don't want to spend the time watching the video lectures and whatnot. Okay. Are there any questions? No questions? Media lecture.
pictures. Video lectures. of the class doesn't even look at the video lectures. <coughs> oh well. If you don't want to read the video lecture, I mean watch the video lectures, then read the book. That's that's my only suggestion. Okay? Do the exercises from the book. As of tonight, you guys should already have covered completely and understood chapters 6, 7, 8, and 9. All the JavaScript that you're going to need. at least the basic JavaScript. Next week we're going to cover the rest of the JavaScript, the advanced, that's part two, and I will be covering live jQuery. jQuery, for those of you who are not first in JavaScript yet, jQuery, it's a library written in JavaScript. Okay, so when you download it, it's free, it's open source. When you download it, all you download is a bunch of JS files. A JS file is a file, it's a text file that contains JavaScript code. And jQuery is a library that is supposed to make you your life easier when you develop in JavaScript. Okay? It has some really cool notation because JavaScript is very lengthy in the way that you call it. So you say, document, give me a tag whose name is body, or whose name is content, or whose ID is content. You know, it's, it's very cumbersome. While with jQuery, all you have to do is dollar sign document, or dollar sign content, and you got it. It will immediately give you that tag and say, here it is. Okay, so what I need you to do is, at this point, since you already know the JavaScript basics, six, seven, chapter six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, start reading about jQuery. I'm going to share with you guys a really nice book. It's Applied jQuery. So it's not going to go through all the basics all over again. It will actually show you real samples. This is how you do it in JavaScript, and this is how you do it in jQuery. Just so you see how jQuery makes your life much easier. In fact, most of the widgets that you're going to find out there, the JavaScript widgets, the date picker, the accordion menu, all that stuff, you are going to find it that it's written using jQuery. So as part of the widget, you're going to be downloading jQuery.js. Okay. Now, on W3 schools, again, really cool stuff, it gives you the basics. So you can actually try yourself. Again, this is the code. This is the HTML. This is the JavaScript code. This is how it renders. Notice that this is what it does. Isn't that cool? you guys see that? That's what JavaScript is all about. JavaScript is code. Code that gets downloaded to the browser. As just like the images get downloaded, just the cascading style sheets get downloaded, just like the HTML get downloaded, all that JavaScript gets downloaded. And the browser executes it. The browser has an interpreter. It has a JavaScript interpreter. So it executes every single code that you downloaded. So you can actually do really cool stuff without having to go all the way back to the internet to that www whatever that you're hitting. No, you don't have to. It's right here on your computer locally on your temporary files folder. Okay? And your browser is executing it. And you can do something as cool as make sections of your page disappear 
with a click. And this is the code that does it. Okay? So please, I need you to start reading into JavaScript. I will explain jQuery next week. Because jQuery is already an advanced level JavaScript. But start reading about it, please. Are there any questions? Okay, so what's due for next week? All the feedback that I gave you, I need you to include it. I did not like your template. I did not like your menu. You're missing registration, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff has to be incorporated for next week. Plus registration page. I need to see what the registration page of a user in your website looks like. Okay? And I'm going to be posting mine. In fact, you guys should already be able to you guys should already be able to see mine. If you go into the wiki and you pull up mine and you go into UI sketches registration. This is what registration looks like in mine. I'm asking for 10 pieces of information from the user, and I need you to do likewise. I'm asking for employee ID, employee full name, the password. I'm making sure that they re-enter the password, and there's a reason for it. Because when you ask for a password, you do not let it show. That means that the user that is typing the password doesn't know what he or she is typing. He or she could be typing something different. And it's very unlikely that he will do it twice. That's the only reason why we do password and re-entry password. Okay? And you got to make sure later on that those two match. The password and then the re-enter password have to match. Otherwise, the user is not putting the right password. Email. Manager. Who is your manager? Obviously, this is this is registration that makes sense to me. Why? Because I'm register employees that are about to log in into the Timex system and start putting their time in timesheets. So I need to know who is her or his manager. And there's going to be a drop-down here, drop-down list of the managers. I also need the address, the city, the state, the zip code. Those are the 10 pieces of information that are relevant for my registration. I need you to do likewise for next week. Okay? What else? Remember I said it, from now on it's two functional requirements per week. So, so far you guys should have home page and login. For next week you have to add registration and add your main entity list. Whatever that main entity. What do you, what do you guys think is my main entity in my system? A timesheet, right? How do you guess that? How do you guess that timesheet is my main entity? Just a wild guess. First of all, timesheet is in the title of my application, okay? My application is an online timesheet system. Second, if you go through my list of entities, which are nouns, from my problem statement, and I reiterate, nouns. Many of you are putting verbs. What are you going to do with a verb? Like, I don't know, running, writing. You're not going to be able to do anything with that. Verbs are actions. I do not need actions. I need entities. I need nouns. Make sure that your list is nouns. 
So if you go through my list of nouns, the very first noun that you see in my list is timesheet. Because that guy is probably the most important one in my application. That's the guy that everything revolves around. This is what my application is. It's how to keep track of employees' timesheets. Yes. Yes, validators will be JavaScript. So, now that you have figured out that timesheet is one of my main entities, okay, then I am going to be able to provide as my fourth page functional requirement something called timesheet list. Okay? And this is the page where the employee lands after logging. So the employee just log in. And we, we're not going to go in detail what that's going to look like. You guys already created your login page, OK? So right now, you're just going to assume that the user just logged in successfully. What are you going to present to him or her? You're going to present a, lo a list of the main entity, the stuff that I want to see. Okay? In this case, the stuff that I want to see when I log in is my. And notice that I say my, not yours, not Michaela's or Jones or whatever, my timesheets. And this is going to be very important later on in the second half of the semester when we actually start putting code. Because that code is going to make sure that you have the content, the right content for you and only for you. Nobody else. Okay? So in this case, I'm being presented with a list of my timesheets. And this is what it looks like. And I don't want to see what some of you have created for this past week homework. That instead of showing me this, you just put a phrase, and I will be putting a list of timesheets here. No, that's not real content. I don't want to see that. I want to see the real content. I know it's fake. I know that this timesheet doesn't exist, and maybe that department doesn't exist, and whatever. But I can see what it's going to look like. A sentence that says, uh, here I'm going to put a list of timesheets is not going to cut it. Okay? So, read the rest of JavaScript chapters. The second part of JavaScript chapters are chapters 10, 11, and 12. Be prepared for jQuery. I'm going to breeze through jQuery. And I'm going to assume that you guys already have enough background of JavaScript, advanced JavaScript, to understand what I'm talking about next week on jQuery. Turn in registration for your website and main entity list, whatever that is. I will be sharing with you video lectures on JavaScript, advanced JavaScript chapters 10, 11, and 12. Are there any questions? Please update your functional requirements. At this point, this page
At this point, this page should have at least the login and the home page, which in my case is one and the same. Home page and login is the same. Okay? For those of you who is not the same, then it's going to be login and home page. And then next week, next week when you turn in your equivalent to timesheet list and registration, I want to see login, home page, timesheet list, and registration. All in the functional requirements. I also want to see the snapshots of what they look like. So if I go to UI sketches, if I am, if I go to UI sketches, I should be able to see what a login looks like, timesheet list looks like, registration looks like. Nobody join in. Are there any questions? No questions? Everything is clear for you guys. Clear as mud. All right. If there are no more questions, then see you next week. Oh, yeah, I'm going to post them tonight. The week five assignment, you mean. Yeah, I'll post them tonight. Oh, one more thing. Somebody else brought up... Um, Some of you work during the day, so it's very hard to try to get the assignment submitted by Friday. And weekends will be a good, it will be nice if you can work on weekends. I understand that. So I am going to allow everybody to submit their homework for that week up until Sunday. Sunday midnight. No later than that. Okay? Because I need time to look at it and give you feedback. Now, I know sometimes during the weekend I don't do it, but... So, it's it's okay for you guys to submit your Friday, which is due Friday, to submit it Sunday before midnight. But that's absolutely the last cutoff. Okay? So that means that you guys have Saturday and Sunday, two extra days, to work on it. And believe me, when you start cranking the functional requirements, you will need that time. So...